The term computer science was coined after I got my PhD, as far as I know. I'm not sure, I'm not, maybe around the same time. Um, I began uh, reading the meager literature that existed uh, on uh, combinatorial mathematics and, and uh, theory of computation. There wasn't much. There was the graph theory book by Koenig. There was, uh, I think, Berger's book had come out by that time. Uh, a few other references, Kleene's book on introduction to metamathematics. But there wasn't really very much to, uh, to dig one's teeth into at the time. Um, so I did a, a PhD dissertation uh, that was concerned with the application of fairly elementary graph theory to the analysis of computer programs, uh, figuring out uh, which variables uh, could be deleted and which variables could be could share a storage location if they didn't conflict, things, things like that. It became something of a fashion in computer science later. I anticipated some of that. Um, that, was, that was my thesis. But at the time I got my PhD, I didn't really feel um, that I had a, a, a truly advanced set of tools in, in mathematics. I was lucky enough to get a wonderful job at IBM. Uh, the IBM Research Center, the Watson Research Center, mm -hmm. outside of New York City. And I consider the nine years that I spent at IBM r really a continuation of my education. I was lucky to have some wonderful mentors. Um, I, uh, upon graduating, I, I had a number of offers from different branches of IBM, and I, it ended up being a choice between joining the Mathematical Sciences Department at the Yorktown Heights Lab, where in fact I did go, or being part of the team that was developing a, an advanced computer system in Poughkeepsie, the so-called stretch computer. Um, the, the same team eventually was responsible for developing the System 360 computers. And um, I was tempted, but I, I sort of had a gut feeling that I, I would do better and have more fun doing mathematical work. So I gave up the opportunity to design the operator console of the stretch computer and joined a, instead a group that was doing a logical design of digital circuits, what, what, uh, what we call switching theory. I felt that I was able to penetrate into that field had wonderful mentors and wonderful opportunities to expand my knowledge at IBM. I got there uh, in 1959, and uh, in 1960, uh, my boss, a man named Paul Roth, had orchestrated a wonderful uh, series uh, extending over several weeks in which uh, many prominent discrete mathematicians came together. These were the people who had really developed uh, discrete optimization, network flow theory, um, linear programming, George Danzig, uh, Ray Fulkerson, Ralph Gomery, and others. And so I was quite excited to meet these famous people from the Rand Corporation, Princeton University, and the other centers where this kind of work was, was going on. The period at IBM was uh, extremely enjoyable. It was really a, a dream job. Uh, every now and then I was asked to do something for the company, which I was willing to do, of course, but 90% of the time I was on my own to work with colleagues at the lab, and they were very good people. There were a couple of things I worked on that seemed to have had an impact from that period. One of them was some work on the traveling salesman problem, uh, the famous problem where uh, you have a salesman who knows the distances between every pair of cities in his territory, and he wants to make a tour of his territory while minimizing the total distance traveled. With a colleague named Michael Held, we developed uh, some algorithmic approaches that for a time made us the uh, world champion solvers of traveling salesman problems. Our, our, that we lost that position very soon, and by now, of course, we've been left in the dust by much more sophisticated methods. Some of the tools that we developed, uh, what's called the lower bound on the cost of the optimal tour, is still uh, investigated, is still investigated. And it's still the champion lower bound. Yeah, I suppose so, yes. I also worked with uh, a long-term colleague, uh, Ray Miller, who was uh, at the IBM Research Lab uh, with me, and we 
we got interested in parallel computation, um, partly motivated by the desire of uh, IBM to uh, develop some algorithms that could be submitted to the patent office so that IBM would have some standing in the area of patented algorithms in case that became a competitive issue. And so we, we developed some uh, formal models that we could use to develop uh, parallel algorithms. Um, and in particular, we created a, an abstract model of um, uh, computation that could, could be asynchronous, meaning that, you, that it wasn't entirely predictable whether one step would proceed. That led to a nice mathematical formalism called vector addition systems.